Hello, I'm Seamus Donahue of Eve University, and this is a review of the highlights of the changes that are coming in the Retribution expansion for EVE Online on December the 4th, 2012. As the word highlights implies, I'm not going to cover everything. If you are interested in everything, however, you can open up your web browser, go to the eveonline.com website. At the top here, mouse over EVE Universe, click on Community, then go mouse over Communication, click on dev blogs, scroll down to the title 59 down ship balancing for retribution by CCP Fozzy, posted 2012, November the 15th, and you can read about everything, or at least a summary of everything here, and this will have links to additional information. Right. Uh, but some of the things that I wanted to point out are as follows. First of all, the long-awaited micro jump drive, which can be fit to any Tech 1 or Tech 2 battleship. Basically what this uh, drive does is that it has, when you activate it, it has a spool up time of 12 seconds, reducible by skills, and if I actually click the jump drive, it's going to spool up, and when it activates, it's going to teleport my ship in whatever direction it's currently moving, 100 kilometers, and then it has a 3 minute cooldown. Just like that. Uh, besides that, there are also salvage drones. Hip hip hooray! Now you can use drones to do your salvaging work for you. A word of caution though, salvage drones have a base access uh, chance of 3%. And with skills you can get this up to 13%. Salvage drone operation level 5, to be specific. Uh, the thing is, you have to remember Wreck, different wrecks have different access penalties, so don't expect these things to salvage high-class sleeper battleships, so they won't completely replace a Noctus. But if you're operating primarily in known space, should be good enough for most purposes. They will be slow, however. Uh, besides that, we also have the new safeties feature. Right. So this button is going to be located to the upper left of your capacitor donut, and if you left click on it, right, uh, the default setting is to enable safety. And what this does is that it prevents you from committing any action that would legally give another player rights to shoot at you. Right. This is part of the changes to the Crime Watch system, and you can read up on that from the dev blog that I mentioned earlier. Oh, by the way, that dev blog, I will include a link to that dev blog directly in the description of this YouTube video. So enable safety means that you can't do anything that would give somebody else cause to shoot at you. You can switch to partial safety. That will allow you to steal things, which allows, which then allows other players to shoot at you, but still prevents you from committing Concordokian offenses. Disable safety will let you do anything, including commit Concordokian offenses. So if you're not interested in being a criminal, you probably want to keep enable safety or partial safety, whereas if you're a suicide ganker, you probably want to disable the safety. Uh, additional highlights, if I can get my uh, fat ship back in the station, Requested. Ship rebalancing. Requested Crowd Control Productions has finished uh, rebalancing the Tech 1 frigates, destroyers, and cruisers. All right. This is part of the so-called Tiracide uh, movement, where, we're, where CCP is getting rid of the built-in inherent inferiorities between ships of the same race, tech level, and hull size. So no longer is an Atron going to be comparatively useless compared to, say, an Incursus or a Tristan. All of the Tech 1 ships, uh, frigates, destroyers, and cruisers, will now have some, use, some useful capacity. In particular, we now have the Tech 1 remote repair ships. All right. So the Execerer, as the Galente example of that, uh, now has a stronger bonus to um, remote armor repair systems repair amount and reduction to the capacitor use, as well as good range on them. Uh, it's better than before. It's not going to be as good as its Tech 2 counterpart, the Oneros, but, it will, but for somebody who can't get into the Tech 2 logistics yet, it'll be okay. 
you probably don't want to try to take these into incursions, though. Most likely. Uh, there are also Tech 1 Remote Repair Frigates. And most of the old racial mining frigates have been repurposed to this. Alright, so the Navitas, for example, instead of being the Galente Racial Mining Frigate, is now a remote armor repair system frigate. Skill training completed. Sorry about that. Um, so the Minmitar, for example, I believe, where is theirs? Here we go, the Burst. It's no longer a mining frigate, it's now a shield transporter boat. So, new players who want to try to get into the remote repair roles, or experienced players who want to provide remote repairs on frigate roams, don't have to come along in much bigger and slower logistics cruisers. Right. Uh, speaking of the old racial mining frigates going away, there is now the new Venture or Frigate, right, which requires the mining frigate skill, and it fits, it has bonuses to mining lasers. It's only got two turret hardpoints, so, so it can only fit two mining lasers, but it has a roll bonus that doubles their capacity. So those two mining lasers will act more like four mining lasers. And in addition to that, it also has bonuses based on the, your level of the mining frigate skill to increase the mining output from asteroid ores or to reduce the cycle time on gas cloud harvesters. Let's see. Electronic warfare is getting some changes. There are some general, there are some mild nerfs to electronic countermeasures. That's the type of electronic warfare that just outright breaks target locks. Uh, but with some buffs to the other forms of electronic warfare, uh, namely target painting, tracking disruption, and sensor dampening. So if I get into my Celestis, for example, and open up the fitting with services, I have a remote sensor dampener 2 fit to my Celestis. Uh, sensor dampeners have had range increases. Uh, you can read up on all of the other electronic warfare changes from the dev block. Right? Uh, but just to take this one as an example, the remote sensor dampener tech 2 at my skills currently on the Buckingham test server it has an optimal range of 75.6 kilometers and an accuracy fall off of 126 kilometers. Meaning that if I'm trying to sensor damp something 200 kilometers away, every cycle, my sensor dampener has about mm, a one-half chance to succeed. Of course, I do have to make sure I fit a Celestis with uh, sensor boosting so they can actually lock out to 200 kilometers rather than the 93 kilometers that it comes with out of the box. But anyway. Uh, finally, interface improvements. Uh, there are m many... What I'm referring to here is interfaces improve as many different little things, too numerous to go over. Uh, but one of the things is that if you're trying to, say, split a stack from one place to another, and I accidentally drop the shift, click, and drag the mega site onto the Noxium by mistake rather than an empty spot, Aura is not going to throw an error message at me saying those things cannot be stacked. Instead, it'll just say, how much do you want to split off? I'll put in a number and it'll just create a new stack in the appropriate place. So no more having to be very precise in having to aim in the gap in between item stacks just to make sure that an item gets to its proper destination. That's just one of the many interface improvements that, uh, that are coming in uh, Retribution. Oh, one other highlight that I almost forgot to point out. Uh, there are going to be changes to uh, target lock portraits. All right. So if, for example, I lock the station, the structure, armor, and shield bars now look different. It's no longer three flat horizontal bars, one on top of the other, underneath the portrait, but rather the bars are now wrapped around the target portrait, just like your own structure, armor, and shield bars are wrapped around the capacitor donut. And these are put in the same order, so the innermost is the structure, Next is the armor, outermost is the shields. Right. Again, this is just a highlight of the changes coming to ret in Retribution. This isn't everything. If you want to know about everything, I will put a description. I will put a link to that dev blog in the description of this YouTube video. 
In the meantime, thank you for watching, and for those of you who have been waiting for me for months to make a new video, I must sincerely apologize. Real Life had tapped me on the shoulder and said, Hey, Shavis! Stuff! Oh, stuff. I probably need to go deal with this. So anyway, I am hopefully going to get back into making videos more frequently. In the meantime, thank you for watching.